confused now, right? Yes. Thank you. This is our sixth session with the young generation of Islamic Leaf Switzerland. And this are talk this is talking about what is the root cause of any problem. There's a problem, okay? We have to find the causes of such a problem. I wrote this and thank you, Brother Ahmed, uh, Ahmed no. for telling me it's a good piece. Let us actually look at it. I think there's something which you have eaten in the Arabic. Uh. Run one or two lines. Yeah. Let me just put it there. At least for the Arabs who are seeing it. Macedonia, but the drink is definitely. <laughs> the drink, I should have taken. I need another drink. <laughs> I can get to the moment. Another drink. Ask the Moshkela or the root cause of the problem. I, if some Arabs, I have you done started. Mm -hmm. You started up. Ask the Moshkela. How the root cause of the problem? The root cause of the problem is where, where is the root cause of the problem? It is in the generation like us who does not read, know, understand, feel, comprehend, be aware, make opinion and achieve its goal. If you don't read, you can know. Okay? If you can't know, you will never understand. Because you have to put the knowledge in front of you to understand. Then, if you don't understand, you can't feel the dimension of the problem. Or the dimensions of the problem. Because every problem has a dimension, not only one dimension, many dimensions. You cannot comprehend, comprehend in Arabic, be aware. If you cannot comprehend, you will never be aware. You will never be aware. That's why one of the most important things for you as you say, Walker, is the information directly coming from the field. The people in the field are the first responder to any problem. Whether the problem is water shortage, education, health, economy, poverty, whatever you call it. Be always waiting for the people in the field to guide you and give you the right information to enable you to write the proper project proposal. The proper project proposal. If you are not aware, you know, you can't form an opinion. On what basis? You say, my opinion is so and so, without reading, without understanding, without knowing, knowing, without comprehending. How can you make an opinion? Most of the leaders that you see nowadays are ultra stupid. 
They make an opinion like Bob Corn, the jump. Very eloquent in the speeches. And everybody <laughs> clap for them. Then such a leader will drown his or her own community. You cannot form an opinion without knowledge, not just reading, without understanding the knowledge, the dimension of the problem, and who is a partner with you. Okay? And if you can't make the opinion, definitely you will never be able to achieve your goals. You want to fight poverty. You want to increase the economical stability. You want big empowerment for women or young people. You can't because you don't go through the process. So young people go from reading, knowing, understanding, feeling, comprehending, being aware, being opinion, then you will be able to achieve your goals. Without going through this process, yeah, unless somebody who has been born and guided with Wahy from Allah. Are you a prophet? Are you a messenger of God? Are you a khidr who came to teach Musa? But he was guided by the knowledge directly from Allah. Allah gave the knowledge which he did not give to Musa. Are you a khidr? Who are you? Somebody has to go through the process. Like anybody else. If you go through the process and go deep into it because you want to learn, you will be able to create the achievement which makes the change in the community. So, reading, knowing, understanding, feeling, comprehending, awareness, making opinion, then achieving your goals. Then, when you achieve your goals, when you achieve your goals, if you don't do that, don't go through this, you will have no role to play in the community. If you don't go through this, you will have no role to play in the community. Okay? Such a generation who does not follow that, has no right to complain. Now, young people, fine, 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 keep complaining. The next door friend, he or she, gone through the process. You or me, waste the time of At the end of the day, what difference it made to you and what impact you're going to do to the community. Your next door friend have gone through the process. So he or she will be able to make the change. But you cannot make a complaint about your failure because you have not gone through the process. What you would say nowadays, it is, let us change. Relax. Ah, okay, fine. Keep relaxing. Keep chilling. So what? When you sit, having some sunbathing, bathing, taking off your clothes and on the seaside and relaxing as a girl with a band, is that making a change in the community? Oh, my skin become bronzy color or golden color. So, don't ever make complaint if you don't go through this process. Sometimes you go even through this process, but you fail. As a test from Allah. Because Allah does not want you to succeed now. Because He wants you to succeed later on. Failure is not a failure. Failure should be treated as a part of success. Because Allah said to you, you are not ready to take the big jump. 
Try You fail, but maybe in a year or two or five, you'll be able to make the change. But not now. Why? Because in the knowledge of Allah, the community might not be ready to your idea. Or you might not be ready to develop your idea. Failure does not mean that you are failing. Failure means that the time could not be right to accept your idea. Or you are not the right person to implement your own idea. Your best idea could be there. But Allah said, okay, fine, I'll give you reward for the idea, but not you to do it. Maybe a layer will do it. Ten years after you. If you look at the, 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 the history of the development of the democracy in Turkey, from the falling down of the Ottoman Empire, at the first quarter of the century, up to today. The first trial came by uh, Turgut Uzal. He was before, uh, what is the name of the man? Adnan Mandris. He failed. Adnan Mandris managed to succeed, then they hanged him. Arbakan came and failed. Then Arbakan, uh, Erdogan came, Erdogan is a failure. And he succeeded. So look at between Turkey to that and uh, Erdogan, how many years? 60 years? Or 50 years? Before that, there was somebody called Anwar Basha. Anwar Basha at the time of Kamal Aktur. They killed him. If you talk from Anwar Basha up to today, it's nearly 100 years. So, the failure of those people which I mentioned does not mean that they are bad. It means either they themselves cannot implement the great idea or the community itself cannot comprehend the great idea. That's why when the coup came in 2016, who was defending? The people <coughs> stood up against the military coup in Istanbul. Okay. And the non-Islamic the secular young girl was showing it live on television, showing Erdogan. She was not an Islamist. Because she was defending her freedom. It does make for her a difference when her freedom will be protected by you, or you, or you. So now the community were ready to implement the great idea which has been put at the seat 78 years ago. That's why a structured idea might not become a fruitful tree if the climate is not changed. To make such a seed, which is the idea, to foster the tree, because the tree cannot be fostered unless the climate will be suitable for it. Not only that, but to bear the fruits as well. Okay? <coughs> Quite often we read a good comprehensive benefiting statement. Is that right? Quite often we read a good comprehensive benefiting statement. Kathir Manala Benefiting statement that no one cares. And I mentioned. Oh my God, he is, uh, she is, uh, oh, he will go again, oh, Hassan, he will say the same thing again. Ahmed, oh my God, he say, oh my God, when Ahmed go to the stage, oh, he will go again. Oh, okay. All right? So this is what I was mentioning. Quite often we read a good comprehensive statement, benefiting statement, that no one cares to read or understand. Oh my God! What's he talking about? What she's talking about? On the contrary, we see tens of hundreds of thousands of people read 
understand, comprehend, and respond to statements on famous actors. Ah, can you see my blouse? Can you see my skirt? Can you see my trouser? Because she is famous. She's a movie star. You are famous. You are Tom Cruise. All the other one. Tom Cruise and somebody else. Tom Cruise. Huh? Tom Cruise. Another one. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Because if you come out as Brad Pitt, ah, look at his shoes. Ah, thousands of people make likes. Make statements. Oh my God, how much is it? One thousand dollars? But if the same man says something meaningful, they will not listen to him. They only are attracted by the shoes, by the skirt, by the belly button that the girl is showing, or the hairstyle. Okay? Let me finish this one. On the contrary, we see tens or hundreds or thousands of people read understand, comprehend, and respond to statements on famous actors. Yes. <laughs> you got it? Address? Okay. The present sick dog. Oh, Lolo is sick. My God, did he take him to the doctor? A dog. Okay. The cat of the centuries, beautiful hairstyle. So I said, look at the hairstyle of this cat. My God. <laughs> you got it? Your cat. Transfer of, the fo of a football player to another team. Christian Ronaldo took about $400 million from a nice football team in Saudi Arabia. Every newspaper. Every television talk about the four hundred million dollars. And others. The sexy attractive chicken. How is the, how a chicken become sexy? Or seventy? Or eighties? Or fifties? <laughs> yes, what's your question? Um, my question was Maybe this is related to the fact that the truth is boring. Can you raise your voice? Because the girl is complaining about your voice. <laughs> uh, maybe this is related to the fact that the truth is boring and the truth involves the process of thinking and many people don't think. The truth is not only boring, it's painful. And it takes the courage of a man and a woman to say it. Because sometimes saying the truth could cost you a life. And the woman which I mentioned now to you, when they said the truth, they were killed. First one was Sumaya, the mother of uh, Ammar, Ammar, and the wife of Yes. When she was tortured by the Catholic of Christ, she was revenging back and she was stabbed by the hour or by the state. The second one was the one who are doing the hairdressing to the daughter of Fair. When the comb fell down, I said, oh God, the girl, the daughter of Fair, told her, you mean my, God, my father? I said, no, 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 your father is not my God. Because the mother, the woman said, oh my God, who is your God? He said, thy God is the God of Moses. You have a God? Uh, uh, different to my father? He said, yes. Pharaoh brought her. She has five children. But she said the truth. Truth is only not understood, but it could be very painful and can cost you life. And said, do you have a God? Than me, different from me. He said, Yes, my God is the God of most, not you. I am going to throw your children one by one into the boiling oil. It's very on white. Huh? It's very on white. No, there's another one. Wow. The hairdresser is one, and the uh, Asia yes. is different one. Because for, for on white, did not have children. Yeah. Uh, and he was 
putting, throwing the children one after one. She, had, she was carrying a suckling baby. Said, Pharaoh, said what? He thought that she's going to repent and to admit. Said, when you throw me and my suckling baby into the boiling oil, please put my bones with the bones of my children in the same graveyard. Said, oh, here we go. Throw her. So she was thrown with all the children. When Prophet ﷺ was going to throw Isra al Mi'raj, when he go to Mi'raj, he smelled this beautiful smell. And asked Jibreel, who is, what's this smell who's come from? He said, this smell is coming from the grave of the hairdresser of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's wife, she believed in her son, Musa. And she told her husband, Pharaoh, said, either you follow me or I torture you. Then he went to her family, because it's from a noble family. He said, no way, Pharaoh is my God. So he tied her legs and her arm in the middle of the desert. And she was making the dua, Rabbi Jali, Baitan for Jannah. Oh, Allah built for me a house in heaven and saved me from Pharaoh and his people. And she was looking up, smiling and laughing. Pharaoh thought that she was he became mad. But she was smiling and laughing because she was looking at her house in heaven. She saw it as dua. So Pharaoh told everybody, see, she is mad. I'm torturing her. And she's smiling. And he threw the stone on her and she died as she did. Saying the truth. Not only painful, but cost to your life. The moment of Surah Yasin, who met the messengers of God, because he has a leprosy and he has to leave the face, the town, be outside. And they told him, we will ask Allah to cure you. So they did pray for Allah to cure the believer of Surah Yasin and he was cured. Then they went to the village too. Then the people in the village did not believe in them. So Allah sent the third one. Then they didn't believe in them, the three. And, so the, and, the, and, the, and the people in the village told them, either you leave or we'll torture you. Then the believer of Surah Yasin came rushing from outside the city, telling him, believe in them. You know what? His reward, saying the truth, they burned him alive. In one narration, all they stood in his village, Till the intestine came from his mouth and the fell bottom. And this is the price of saying the truth. You got it? That's why Allah SWT said, whoever can say the truth, make the change. Make the change by hand, you can do it. By tongue, you can do it. Even if you can't say by hand and tongue, in your heart. heart. Because Allah knew. It's not everyone like anybody else, like Ammar. When they killed his mother and his father, and Quraysh pushed him to say something bad about the Prophet. And he was crying. Then he went to the Prophet and said, I've done so and so and so. I said, Your heart, are you believing what they say or what? He said, No, no, no. Then they come back to you again. And they want to torture you. Say the same thing. Not to be tortured. Alright? Okay. As mentioned by many poets, dreams are not fulfilled by wishes. No. Not by wishes. But by struggle. Those who are afraid to climb mountains will forever live in holes. This is Abu Qasim al ومن لم يستطع صعود الجبال يعيش أبد الظهر بين الحفر. Whoever cannot climb the mountains will be living 
inside the holes of rats and mice. Okay, hey, listen. In Arabic, let me say it in Arabic, because Arabic is very boom, 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 boom. Give you this, and you will see the meaning of this house of the people. And the meaning of the house of the people is the meaning of the people, but you will take the world away from it. It is not your wishy wishing, it is your struggle to extract the solution and take it by winning the war against the enemies of Allah. هنا بقى دي عبد القاسم الشاب مش عندكم انتوا انت 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 منين انت؟ من تونس انت من تونس؟ ايوه عبد القاسم الشابي دايد ات ذا ايج اوف 30 اور 25 هي واز از ا بويت اه اه نيفر بين كريتد لايك ذات يانج مان ومن يتهيب صعود الجبال يعش ابد الدهر بين الحفر اذا الشعب يوما اراد الحياه فلا بد ان يستجيب القدر ولا بد للليل ان ينجلي ولا بد للقيد ان ينكسر ولا يتاتى هذا الا بالعلم والمعرفه والبحث والتكوين الفكري الاجتماعي لدى الشعوب. This is part of the Tunisian anthem. ولا بد ان In English. Dreams are not fulfilled by wishes, but by struggle and ex of extracting the truth from the mouth and the heart of the mind of your enemies. Those who are afraid to climb mountains will forever live in holes. Faith will respond to the nation's will to live. Will to live. The darkness of its night and break the chains of this level. Say it again. Faith will respond to the nation's will to live in the darkness of this life of, of, of night and break the chains of this level. That I will pass the We can only achieve that through education. Knowledge, learning, scientific discoveries, and societal configuration of the intellectuals. You understand the English? Are you sure? Ask the people on the Facebook. Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> We can only achieve that through. I have mentioned this. Let us believe that life is not. A dice, you know, they play with the dice <laughs> on a gambler's day. I mean, a strike of luck. Oh, it's my luck. Okay, beautiful face, strong bodies, or youth energy. Life is about enduring, perseverance, risk taking, and patience. Liars believe that life is not a dice in a gambler's, on a gambler's table, a mere strike of luck, beautiful face, that people uh, follow me because I'm handsome. Okay? Strong bodies, or youth energy. It's about enduring perseverance and rest taking and patience. ولنعلم أن الحياة ليست زهرا على دورة مقام أو حظا سيقا لشخص دون آخر أو جمال وجه جمال وجه وقوة عضلات وصوت شباب بل هي مكابدة ومصابرة ومصابرة ومخاطرة. Right? Can we move it up? Let us be more optimistic. 
I'll spend more efforts in these blessed days. Solution is a God giving gift to the hard working, persistent, sincere, selfless, and ambitious individuals. I say it again. Let us be optimistic and spend more efforts in these blessed days. Solution, here, 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 the question which has been raised by both of you. Solution is a God-given gift. To whom? Not to everyone. To the hard working, number one. Persistent, insistent, sincere, selfless, and ambitious individuals. You have to do hard work. You have to be insistent. You have to be selfless, no ego. You have to be sincere. And you have to be ambitious. Ambitious. When Allah looks at you and you are like that, He gave you the gift of the solution. And I end it by Allah. I love you. Well, I know. Okay. But in the time of these days of barakah, we have the most effort, متفائلين بأن الحل لا يسقه المولى إلا لمن للمشاهدين. Andres, this is coming back to the root causes. These are the root causes of the problem. And the problem is lying inside our hearts, our mind and our soul, not in the community. If we believe that we can make a change, we'll make the change. Abdullah Mas'ud was a shepherd and he refused to give the Prophet Sallallahu a drink from milk from the goat or the sheep. Because he was made responsible for the sheep. The soil. The sheep belong to my master. I can't give you any drink. Prophet Sallallahu told them, give me the youngest. And Adnan Shah gave him the youngest, which does not have the uh, breast to, to milk. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a dua and became full of milk. Then he met the sheep and gave everybody to them. Abdullah Masood at the time was not a Muslim. He looked at this and said, Oh my God, this man cannot be an individual like us. He must be a prophet. Then he became a Muslim. Abdullah Masood, his body was very little and his legs were very thin. And when he used to climb a tree, they looked at his legs and laughed. Oh, it's very thin. Eh? You know what the Prophet said about his legs? He said, the weight of Abdullah bin Saud's legs is heavier than the weight of the mountain of Uhud because of the iman that Abdullah bin Saud had in his heart. He was the first one to recite Quran in public. And when Quraysh saw him, they beat him to death. He was saved by the companions. When he went to, when he went to the Prophet Sallallahu he saw the blood and the cuts on his face and ears. He was very sympathetic to him. And they were praying for him. He said, Prophet, I have tested the sweet of a man when he was beating me. And if you want me to go again, I can go again, and again, and again. This was Abdullah ibn Masood. It's called the nickname in, in Arabic, Ibn Umm Abd. Because he was not a slave, he was just a poor man. A poor young man. Who believed in the Prophet when you saw him changing the breast of the female young sheep, became full of milk, then after they finished, it came back again as it was before. He was the companion the rule, the best Quran. He was Muslim Quran. Yeah. And there is a narration saying that if you wanna 
Listen to the Quran the way it has been revealed to the Muslim. And he became one of the greatest Muhammadan from a shepherd to a great scholar of Tafsir. Alright, this is the second session of today, which is the sixth session since yesterday. Question now. Yes. It was very uh, inspiring, mashallah. <coughs> in, in the time, maybe. Uh, did you see the difference of me reciting Arabic or reciting English? Which was more powerful? Your English speaking, uh, you heard me reciting the Arabic and reciting the English. Which one hits you more? The one that I understand, but uh, the Arabic is... <laughs> Arabic is... Uh, it's, it seems more powerful. Yeah, the one you understand, which is Urdu. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, carry on. What's your um, question? So you said earlier that we are living in a time where um, um, the powerful people are trying or they want to impose a culture. Yes. Where everyone and just what? Things to seem, to think the same thing. Um, we are also living in a time where the message of we can do everything by ourselves, everything is possible, everything, but it's more individual uh, than collective. How um, how do we keep in the right? I would say, uh, as young people again, um, how do we keep on the right track? Because I feel that it's also easy. And with shaitan and stuff, to quickly shift to the logo and to the ego and logo. Mm -hmm. um, so, a lot of the ways, the, the signs, the things that we should be really careful. Yeah. I think you have to have your own personal beauty. You, me, him, her, have to have personal beauty. Daily personal beauty. To keep yourself protected. You know that Allah created angels, jinn, human beings, and other creation. And the devil, or the monkeys, the genie, he promised that to distract the people and throw them into hellfire. This is his mission. Because he refused to make sujood to Adam. At that time. So to be protected from that, there's many things that you can do. First of all, your daily duty. You read Quran every day. You can't read it Arabic. At least you can read it English to understand the meaning. You can listen to it, even if you don't understand. It. This is number one. Do we observe the five prayers every day? That's number two. Do we have an extra prayer that we can pray at night when nobody else can see us? 10 15 minutes? That's number three. Do we read the story of the great companions and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn from them? That's number four. Do we do some charitable activity? and social work to help others, that's number five. Do we uh, observe our behavior when we are in the room alone, nobody can see us, that's number six. Do we keep seeking refuge to Allah or in Allah when we go to the toilet, take off our clothes, because that devil as Allah said in the Quran, He sees you with his tribe and you cannot see him. So when we take off our clothes, do we make the dua? 
на неговото аутория. Такъв е плод на Абас. Но не осли го зривайф. To be protected from the devil or not. That's number seven. Do we treat people nicely? Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallam has been mentioned by Allah on my Ahsan Naka in the Rahmat and I have sent you as a message from mankind. And they said, Innama Gurifthu li utammim makaram al-akhlaq who have been sent for the fulfillment of the best of manner of mankind. Is our manner is to the standard or not? Do we lie? Do we deceive? Do we take the rights of others or not? Do we backbite or not? Do we scandal monger or not? All these things. You put it like Hazrat Omar said, حَسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْنَا أَنْتُ حَسَبُوا Be accountable to yourself before you will become accountable before Allah because Allah will show you your amal from birth to death in a video, audio you cannot deny it because you see yourself حَسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْنَا أَنْتُ حَسَبُوا Make yourself accountable to yourself before you become accountable for Allah SWT. حَسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ حَسَبُوا وَزِنُمْ عَمَلَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْتُوْزَنْ عَلَيْكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ And weigh your deeds before it's being weighed by Allah in front of you. And be prepared for the great day when everybody else will stand before Allah. Be prepared for that day. This is what Omar was reminding himself. And he said, Omar, Radhi Anu, Rahimallah, Imru'un ahda ala ya'ubi. Bless the one of you. May Allah bless the one of you who gave me my mistakes as a gift. You don't come and say that, Oh, sister, in public, you've done these bad things. Talk to her or talk to him in private. Have you done this? Yes, please don't do it again. But if you make it in public, that makes you make a scandal of my mistake. Okay? This is how Omar and the others would do it. Clear? Yes, don't do it. Yes, Tonda. Uh, I just had a short comment or as a follow-up to what Hassan mentioned about the importance of um, uh, mining or sort of being mindful of our own uh, connection with the Dean. I, did not, I did not mention your friends. Choose your friends. And the friends. Choose where you go. You, I can go to the pub. I go to the cinema, I go to the red area, or I can go to the mosque. The food which can take me to the pub and the cinema and the red area is the same food which can take me to the mosque. The, the desire of letting me to be good, with good people is the same desire which can make me to be a friend with the public. Carry on. Uh, so my commentary was to sort of add more importance to the fact that Ahla for the people who are in the humanitarian sector like Islam, Ahmed, me and others is even more highlighted in the sense that we are now, we have dedicated our lives or part of our lives to this. We have to be more mindful of how we behave, what is our Ahla. So that then this becomes, inshallah, an example for the future trajectory of the humanitarian uh, sector as well. So what this akhlaq is, a, is an obligation of every Muslim to take care of their own akhlaq, but especially those who are engaged with making a change in the world. Social work, yeah. Social work in other in other sense. That's why Aisha Dalana described the Prophet mm -hmm. that his manner was Quranic. Yeah. 
He was a Quran, a working Quran on the earth of the akhlaq. Any other questions for this session? No? No? All right, we can make five, ten minutes break to get the final session, inshallah.